Hello and welcome back to SpeedyNet, a transport company in the world of OpenTTD. And right now, <laughs> we're fishing at sea. <laughs> That's how we make our money. Uh, but it works. I mean, we are making profit. Take a look at this. Take a look at our income graph. It's almost vertical. Uh, that's how it should be. So, well, when last we left off, uh, we did kind of set up a new fishing route over here. Now, someone in the comments did mention that uh, maybe it would be a nice idea to have one ship go clockwise and the other, wise, other one counterclockwise. You know, I'm on these double... Uh, well, double ship fishing routes. And while the idea is nice, um, I do know uh, why that is not gonna work. And uh, let me just tell you. See, if we have this three tons of fish here, this cargo distribution now, and the way that works is that this three tons of fish needs to go to the Brunway docks via uh, this fishing ground. So, if we were to go counterclockwise, then the ship going counterclockwise would not be able to pick up this fish. Because it will only go, it will only be picked up if the ship goes to this fishing ground next. So that's why it's not gonna work. Though I like the idea, and in terms of performance, it doesn't really matter much. But I just thought it would be nice if they were like, you know, going counterclockwise. So they could say hi to each other on the way, but no. Not gonna happen, and that's why. Now, we do have this new fishing line over here with these hyper-productive uh, fishing grounds. And, well, I can safely say that we need more than just the one clipper over here. So, we might as well wait till we get a little bit more money and get ourselves that second ship. There we are, 93,000 euro bucks. We have more than enough to get ourselves our second clipper here, which we will. Uh, in fact, we will just clone this ship there. Oh, that should have it all set up perfectly right with the right cargo type. And then, um, well, let's launch it then. I mean, I don't know really how much, how full this ship is right now, but. Yeah, look at that, 162 tons, and then it still needs to go to this hyper-productive fishing ground. So this second ship is definitely needed. However, with the second ship, my guess is that they'll both ha carry around, I think, 100 to 120 tons of fish once they reach the harbor. So they won't always pull in full loads, and I also don't think we'll see like 14 grand figures. But... We should see like uh, 8 or 9 grand per load, so that's pretty decent. Now, we have some more fishing grounds over here. And we also got ourselves a fishing harbor on this nice little island. <laughs> I mean, I do wonder though, how the dock workers over here get to their work? <laughs> I mean, since we are the only means of transportation in this world <laughs> and we're only fishing, I do wonder, I mean, do they swim to their work? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter much to me. Um, I do see all these fishing grounds over here. Now, we might as well hook those up, right? However, I've also been thinking, all these, this fish that we transport to these harbors is producing food. And we should take that food to a place that can use it. Now, preferably, we take that food to a hotel. Because of all the options of where the food can go to, really, uh, only the hotel will actually net us uh, something more. The hotel will give us passengers, while all the other things won't give us anything. I mean, if we go... where is it? The fishing harbor? There, we go to the grocery shop. See, that's pretty much an end station for anything, really. And the same is really true for the petrol station, it doesn't produce anything. Only the 
uh, hotel gives us passengers in return more than it would usually however I mean I don't see any hotels nearby here so I think we have to leave the hotel option and just take the nearest possibility now if we take a look over here I see a hardware store and a timber yard I mean that's hard to miss but there's no place really for where we could uh, possibly put well, for example, a dog and have that... Oh no, it will accept food. Alright. Alright, well, so if this accepts food, why is that? Is that because of the town or is that because of the... Yeah, I think that must be because of the town. Or there is a grocer shop hidden <laughs> somewhere where I can't see it. No, that's alright. So it will accept food. Um, which town are we going to take? I'm thinking we're going to take this town then. Oh, this one does have a textile mill close by. If I put a dock over here, the textile mill is also serviced. Hmm. Perhaps it's smarter to take this town then. And uh, let's actually see. If I were to put a dock over here, it would not accept food. Right now it does, but that is because of the grocery shop. Right now it will also accept food, but not anything from the textile mill. So yeah, we kind of need to surface the grocery shop here as well. But we'll put the dock over here then. All there. And uh, now we just need to wait just for a little bit till we have enough for one of these schooners. So that we can have a boat go to and from over here. I've also considered doing a, a road uh, to this place. But the thing is that well, roads, they are an investment. <laughs> a big one. Ships also, but we don't need to invest in infrastructure. So if we can get by with just docks, we will. Especially over here, since there is no real hotel for us to serve anyway. We could just as well take a dock. If there was a hotel, say, over here or over here, I would have built a road to there because of the increase in passengers. But for now, we will take enough with the dogs. So, tell me, how much money will I get? Ooh, we got six and a half. I don't know how much... Well, game part. I don't know how much fish you were carrying exactly. But it does seem that, yeah... Even though the load might have been close to full, actually, it, it seems that because all these fishing grounds are relatively close by, we're not gaining that much money from them. Well, that's alright, though. I mean, they will make us a profit. The fact that I mean, they're close by also means that they return more often to the harbor. So, well, let's get ourselves one of these schooners set up to transport some food. There, there it is. Now, the thing is that the first time, right now, there is no food waiting there because we never really had uh, anything taking food from there. And even though it says 105 tons of food produced, it won't be generating food out of there. It will only produce food if we unload a crap load of fishes over here. So, the first few times for this schooner, it might be just running to and from empty, but once uh, this one over here has dropped a good load of fish, then there will be lots of food waiting here, so... Right, well... Um, I think right now, maybe we should take a look at our other fishing harbors and see if we can get some food to a nice place from the other places. You know, like, for example, this dock over here. Is there a hotel nearby? That's a glass works. I don't see a hotel. Usually the hotels are also reasonably close to a village. So, by, by the way, I mean, there isn't even any village close by. Oh no, there is. There is over here. And it has a grocer shop. Well, I guess that's easy then. Uh, let's get ourselves a dock over here. And get it set up so that we can transport food here.
Alright, so another schooner added to the fleet. I mean, <laughs> well, we're expanding rapidly. <laughs> we're still in the first year. And all of a sudden we got ourselves like 10 ships sailing for us. We're doing good. Now, this one over here. Well, this one actually doesn't produce that much food. I mean, it's only one schooner uh, who goes to these two fishing grounds. So uh, if we were to get another schooner for all the food... I don't think that that would work actually because as you can see only five tons of food is produced per eight tons of fish so i think that if we were to go with another schooner here that's actually overkill that schooner wouldn't be making as much as profit as we need it to you know with company taxes and all that so i won't be using a schooner on this one We'll just leave the food there, really, you know, we just take whatever we can from these fishing grounds and leave it that be. Then, we had a few fishing harbors over here as well that we were servicing. Like you, you produce 95 tons, and you, 110. Now, yeah, I know that there's a hotel over here, so what we are gonna do is we are gonna build a road towards this hotel. And, well, at least this one, this is too far for a road. I mean, well, <laughs> right now our horses, <laughs> they are turbo horses. They are not on steroids. So, yeah, we c this is too, way too far. We would need a train for this. But I feel that a train for just some food to a hotel, it's not worth the investment. So, what we need to do is we need to build ourselves a road over here. But before we do that, I think we should see that we get some more fishing ships out there to increase the speed at which we gain income here. Because right now, really, it's not all that fast. So, I do see some very juicy fishing grounds over here. 63, 63, 56... 63, 72, look at that. They're more or less all average, really. These dredging sites, by the way, we can also do stuff with, but not the fish. And since that's our core business, we'll stay focused on that for now. Uh, but we might uh, want to use these dredging sites later on. Anyway, um, yeah, let's uh, get this set up now, shall we? Right, so we got ourselves this clipper, but if we take a look at the route for this clipper, this is a long route, and we might not even have enough for uh, two clippers. We might even need like a third schooner over here. I think that three clippers will be way overkill, but we'll have to see really how it pans out. For now though, since, well, we don't really even have the money to buy anything. Let's see how much money this fully loaded schooner will make us when it has a full cargo of fresh and delicious food. Which it brings to the textile mill. Look at that. Two and a half thousand. <laughs> Only for this really tiny short distance. I mean, food is a really profitable resource. And if we take a look at... Uh, cargo payment rates for example and we compare fish and food oh it's, it seems that fish is actually more or less as profitable and remains so even more all right that's interesting really interesting but even that because food is processed i do think that it will have some higher rates uh, I hope. Uh, the graph says otherwise, though. Uh, I don't really know how that works out, but fine. <laughs> fine. Anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's wait till we have enough money to buy ourselves a second clipper for here. And there we are. Rich enough again to get ourselves this clipper, so... Uh, let's buy it immediately, because we don't want any time to waste. Crap. <laughs> now, I should have just cloned this ship, but <laughs> I kind of forgot. Oh, well. Not a biggie, really. Not a biggie. Now, 
with you. I'm curious to see if we will need a third ship on this one. But there's only one real way to find out, and that is just to leave this running for a while till it has made a few rounds. So we can see how it evens out. But yeah, it's definitely a bit going like this. Uh, they, they do make their distances, so we'll have to see. We'll all have to see how it turns out. In the meantime, though, I think right now would be a nice moment to start making... Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> um, there it is. To um, build that road from this fishing harbor to this hotel. It's gonna be expensive, especially this part over here. So we might as well uh, start with that one. So if we do that, and then let's see here. How expensive is this gonna be? Just this stretch. Look at that, 11,000. <laughs> that's more or less all our money. And that's just for the stretch through the field. The rest will be cheaper. I mean, see, that, that, that doesn't cost that much. But as you can see, this is the hard pack for you. Costs have increased <laughs> quite a bit. So we want to avoid fields. We even want to avoid rocks, because rocks are also expensive. And preferably trees. Look, I mean, two stretches on plain field cost 512. But there, it costs a little bit more. The trees aren't really the main issue. Um, so yeah, perhaps we do need to save up a little bit more so that we can actually build this road. Now, in terms of investment in what our property is worth, building this one over here that costs us uh, that much is not adding that much to the company value. No, there's like a fixed price per unit of track or road or anything but it just costs more because we have to clear the fields and that and we are close to a town there's more or less with the idea that you kind of have to buy out the farmers to give up their land and pay the town because we're building close to them right i think right now we have enough money to build it so let's get this uh, road <laughs> on the road <laughs> right <laughs> There we are, it's finished. Our lovely little road is there. And it didn't even cost us that much in the end. Now, you might be wondering a few things, like why do we have this turn here set up like this with on-road stops? I mean, they're far from ideal and I know that. But uh, the thing is that if we go to our uh, vehicles over here, we have these horse carriages. And um, let me just tell you that the horse carriages cannot make a turn on the same tile. Well, they can do if they're forced, but they won't do it with uh, just a regular loading station. That is like a dead end. They can only load and unload on these kind of on-road stations. And then we, of course, need a turn here, because otherwise they would still get stuck. So that's really the reason for it. But um, yeah, look at this. This is the big list of horses that we can buy and look we even got horse trams <laughs> how amazing is that uh, anyway we're not gonna build trams even though they, they are quite cheap actually um, but this is for cargo I wouldn't mind passenger trams but I think it's lame to have cargo trams so we're not gonna go with cargo trams besides look at that they, they are ridiculously slow now what we need is an icebox carriage. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that holds up in the year 1851. But still, we do need this and we are gonna go with the fastest one. Because as we've seen, food uh, deteriorates in value really quick. And since these aren't the fastest, I mean 26 kilometers an hour. But uh, I go faster on my bike if I put some power in it. <laughs> so yeah, we kind of want to get the fastest ones. The most expensive ones, but still. Now look at this. At good times it's making 210 tons of food. So I think it wouldn't be such a bad idea if we start out with at least three of those horse carriages. So 
where are you there ice box now you can see that the tram carriage isn't here but that's because this is a road depot and not a tram depot so there you have it um, well we will buy one at first and then we'll clone it a couple of times so we'll have you go over there you go over there and I'll tell you to put full load on here and unload all over there but do not take cargo and with these ships it's kind of not necessary but over here for some reason I think full loading over here is better otherwise though I don't want these horses to just run around empty I'd rather have them stay here wait for food than sail around really because they can't take that much anyway. I mean, if you take a look at their capacity, they can only take 8 tons of food. So it doesn't really matter much uh, if they wait here. I mean, it's not like we're losing out big time or anything. Uh, anyway, we'll duplicate you three times and we'll tell them all to go off. And, um, well... Uh, have I put the depot on the wrong side? Yeah, I might have. Yeah, alright, so they can't leave. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, herp and herp. <laughs> let's uh, le let's get you guys back to the depot, right? Because <laughs> yeah, this is obviously my fault. No, you don't need to stop. You need to go to the depot. Yeah, crap. Where is? All right, let's get a list of <laughs> vehicles, which are horses. You, you need to go to the depot as well. And I need to sell all of you because I derped up the depot facing. I thought I had it done right though. Apparently I did not. Well, uh, let's give this a retry, shall we? Alright. In all honesty, I thought that this one... No, it wasn't. It needed to be this one, of course. You know what, just to be sure, we'll just put it like this. There, now I know it's good. And uh, let's set this up again. And there we are. And look at this. Horse carriages. <laughs> and this is what they look like. <laughs> Aren't they cute? And they're adorable. <laughs> also, one cool thing that they did add is the fact that uh, not all of these horses are equal. I mean, some are white, some are brown. I think those are really nice little detailed touches that uh, they got here. But um, for now though, they will be waiting here till the first ship arrives. So Anyway, um, that's all nice. Now we do see that this whole shenanigan actually netted us in quite a bit of money. So why don't we go and check back on this route over here. Uh, let's see, you are ship 12 and you are ship 11. So, how are you doing in terms of... Oh. Interesting. I think after this, you only need to go to these two. And you got 138. Oh, never mind. Right now, you're filled up. But you, on the other hand... You got 62 tons of fish already in your holds. Hmm. You know what? We might indeed need a third ship here. I'm just... What I really need to know is like how much... Uh, well, how much cargo space you will have left once you reach this fishing ground. If, it's, if you are full as well already, then we definitely need a third ship. And maybe even a third clipper. Or perhaps a schooner. But anyway, I don't want to wait till that point because that is going to take a while. But let's do some scouting and see if there are more fishing grounds for us. Because so far, this whole fishing business... Wait, what? <laughs> One fishing ground right next to a harbor. Yeah, there's no profit to be gained from that. But uh, anyway, right now... Whoa! My lord! Oh, profits. Oh, wow. If we can get this all covered, then we're golden. Then we're... Oh, my goodness. Wow. If only I had checked. Oh, my goodness. Wait. Yeah, and there are fishing harbors here. Uh, it's perfect, really. It's absolutely perfect. 
Yes, nice, nice, nice. Is this also a fishing harbor? No, it's a town. By the way, look at these queers or bay piers that they have here. I think it's quite nice. Wow, and there's docks over here. I mean, there's fishing docks and there is fishing grounds here in an abundance. I smell money. Money that needs to be made from over here. Yeah, look at that. Oh, this is... Oh, yeah, we're gonna be rich. At least we will be rich enough to get us really started. And then we can also start getting some business going on the ground. Speaking about which... Why don't we set up our HQ right next to our very first uh, road line thing? And I think because we're a transport company, we don't belong at such a small village. We belong at the heart of our industry. That would be right here. So let's uh, place our HQ. Uh, by the way, I do think though that our HQ actually generates passengers. So, yeah. perhaps it's smart if we build it reasonably close by. Anyway, I kind of forgot. Oh, yeah, here it is. Build HQ. Right. There. <laughs> and it's just a shed. <laughs> just a farm. I think, actually, that there are also GRFs that add HQ graphics, but I kind of forgot about those. So, <laughs> we'll just have to do with the standard uh, HQ graphics. But there. They... HQ of SpeedyNet has been built. Amazing. Right, now, um, let's get ourselves set up over here. So we got ourselves these four fishing grounds. Ooh, 108. I saw it there. And 90. I think that these four over here can easily be surfaced by just one ship. And, well, then we've got two harbors to choose from, really. But I think that this harbor... With the possibility to bring its food to this town, because it's reasonably close. I think that this harbor is the perfect candidate. So, yeah, we'll get that set up right over there. Alright, another ship is ours. Amazing. By the way, how big is our fleet right now? All ships, 13 ships, <laughs> and we're only in March of the first year, or uh, of the second year. <laughs> yeah, we're doing quite well for ourselves. Anyway, by now, we should also have some more definitive results on, like, how full you are. Yeah, there's no questioning about it. We need another ship over here. How much profit did you make? Ooh, you, these are the big ones as well. Look. Yeah, they make like 14,000 or so on a haul. That's pretty good. Pretty, pretty decent. And yeah, you're full. So that means that these two fishing grounds never had any fish taken from them. And this one? Yeah, that one also still got some fish left. So that means, say for example that they were to run. That means that these would be like 20 fish, 20, somewhere around 15. That's only like 50 fish. That's too much for a schooner. But it's also not really enough for a, to warrant a clipper. So what are we going to do about this? You though already have 115 tons of fish. Oh man. Well what we could do. We could add like two schooners. I think two schooners would be it really. I think with that we have what we need. Not too much, not too little. That would add an extra 80 capacity really. So yeah, let's let's get two of them. Uh, oh crap, <laughs> I should have cloned it again. I'll uh, set this up. There, and these are our two newest additions to the fleet. Look at that. Wait, they're actually stacked on top of each other? How is that even possible? Yeah, there must be. I swear I had two ships over here. Hold on a second. Um, <laughs> let me just quickly... I think they have left both at the exact same time. 
Have they now? Yeah, they have, look, see? <laughs> oh, I was worried for a moment that one might have glitched out, but no, <laughs> that did not happen, fortunately. So, good, good, good. More money for us. Now, let's uh, get down back to here. This over here will make us plenty of profits. Uh, but there are more fishing grounds over here. And I think we should take a look. Oh, look at this. I mean, we could even fish from land over here. <laughs> just throw out our <laughs> angling rod, our fishing rod, and uh, <laughs> just fish from the... Ah. There's not much there anyway. I think the locals are actually doing just that. Otherwise, there would have been much more tons of fish there. Wow, if the locals can pull up tons of fish. So can we. And we will. I'm just looking right now here for a fishing harbor. For any fishing harbor, really. I do know that there's one over here. So perhaps we should use this one for these five fishing grounds. And then perhaps we should use this one for these five fishing rods. Sounds like a plan, now doesn't it? We could also use the one for the uh, all the fishing rods. To be honest, that would be more efficient actually. If we build a dock like over here, that would save us at least the cost of one dock. Yeah, let, let us do that. So I'll get that set up. Ooh, did you saw that? This, ladies and gentlemen, is a new ship available. And, um, well, <laughs> it's a steamship. As it happens, we are into the ship business. So, let's see, is it available to us as well? It is. Now, let's compare this. It's a little bit more expensive, but it is faster. It can carry a lot more. But the real deal is, of course, the running costs. And as far as I can see, I mean, this can carry 170. Uh, this can carry 300. So I think that in terms of uh, carrying capacity cost-wise, you know, <laughs> whatever, the, the ratio here, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, I think it's more or less equal. The one big catch here is... Oh, it's only refitable to passengers or mail. So never mind, <laughs> I thought we would have the first steam fishing ship. No, <laughs> not gonna happen. It's also not reliable at all. Whereas these sailing ships totally are reliable. So, yeah. Um, anyway, I'll get these fishing ships set up and sorted here. So... Right, now, what we, we did have an issue over here, and that is that apparently the game thinks it's too far between this fishing ground and this one. So we had to place ourselves a buoy, bu buoy, <laughs> or however you pronounce it. So, yeah. Those are like uh, waypoints for ships, really. Same as we have waypoints for trains. We, these are waypoints for ships. But, um, well, with this ship, we... Ooh. Yeah, whoa, <laughs> oh my lord, <gasps> wow, we got, I said, this, this could, oh man, I wish that steamship would have been able to carry fish, I would have bought it instantly, however, this will most definitely need two schooner, uh, clippers, perhaps even three, because all these fishing grounds, I don't, I don't know, there is something in the water here. <laughs> yeah, maybe there's, instead of just cobfish or trout, there's actually whales over here. I don't know, really. Anyway, yeah, we got ourselves quite the fishing empire going on now. And um, profits are also going quite well. Uh, if we take a look, yeah, see, this was our first vertical line. I think that it's just, well... I'm and pretty sure it won't keep expanding like this, but it's so far, we had a good start. Fishing was definitely the right choice. And on that note, I'd say join me next time when we will do more fishing, more food transportation. And perhaps we'll take a look at some other industries. So, join me then.